Okay, what's going on, people? It's your man, Everything by John here again with another great episode of the podcast on YouTube and everything like that. I got a few special guests in the building, and this is from, uh, and, you know, this is why I created my podcast in the first place to interview people uh, and entrepreneurship from all different walks of life. And I have uh, I have something that I don't think is really seen yet in the community or even on uh, social media. So uh, I have some two, uh, I have two guests, two special guests. Uh, how about you guys introduce yourself? Um, thanks for having me, John. Definitely appreciate kind of like the opportunity having me on the podcast. My name is Jason Pander and I'm the owner of uh, B Condoms, uh, only black owned condom company uh, based out of New York, soon to be head co- headquartered out of Atlanta. Mm. Um, hey, it's Taryn Williams, the PR. I'm um, just here in the back row. I'm glad to be here. I'm glad that we can be on here. Um, yeah, I'm looking forward to the interview. Excellent, excellent, excellent. Oh, man, I mean, and you said uh, B-Con. Well, first of all, I'm from New York, too. I'm in Brooklyn, uh, to be exact. So oh, someone from, up. yeah, no, definitely, definitely. So someone from New York, from the East Coast, and something so interesting. Um, so just, well, you know what, before I even get into the actual entrepreneurship part, Tell me about you guys' background. Um, I, I know exactly where you're from, but tell me how it was growing up and, and what kind of led you to this industry that you're in right now. Um, for me, that, that was kind of, it, it's kind of been a journey. Um, I, I'm originally from Massachusetts, right? It's a town mm, okay. called Brockton or whatever. So I'm originally from Brockton, Massachusetts. Um, growing up, my mother used to have like a detox and transitional care facility. So, you know, for people kind of cleaning up off like, drugs, alcohol, crack cocaine, like during that whole epidemic. Um, So from that perspective, kind of like community work was kind of all in our household. Like where, you know, and it was one, the only, at that point, it was like the only one run by like somebody of color, like a black person or whatever in the state of Massachusetts. Cause you know, despite what a lot of people may say, there's still a lot of color lines when it comes to like the management of the uh, operations of a lot of things. But yeah, definitely. um, What happened with me was, you know, I kind of grew up in that household. First job was there, you know, all, all, all of my experience was, was literally just like working, work, working with black people and trying to help us move, move the culture ahead. And then at that point, you know, I, I moved to Atlanta, I went to college, went to Morehouse or whatever, then moved back to DC, was practicing law, went to law school. Um, and at that point, like you ever have a job where you're just not really feeling fulfilled. Where oh, like man, you know, I don't know if you're asking me that or everybody in the audience. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Where like sometimes it's not even about the money. Like you may be making good money, you may feel stable mm. or whatever. Like at least financially, but mm. then you just be looking around and you kind of feel like the walls is kind of like caving in on you, right? Yeah. Yeah. So you're like, you know, like I, I don't, and, and then everybody knows, like you know, we may only get one shot at this, right? So it's kind of like, you know, if this is my shot. Yeah. You know, like, what, well, like, is do I continue on this path or do I try to, like, figure something else out? Right. So at this point, one time I kind of, I went back home to Mass, was was talking with my mother or whatever, and I was like, you know, we got into talking about just, like, a lot of coded language that people use when they talk about people from our kind of community or whatever, right? Right, right, right. So right. we were talking, and I was like, you know, it's really interesting that like when people talk about like HIV and AIDS, people talk about teen pregnancy, they're always like, oh yeah, it's them. <laughs> you know, it's an urban yeah. disease or whatever. Another way, mm-hmm. another way yeah. just saying black people, right? Yeah. Um, so on that, re- on that perspective, then I sat back and, and I was already kind of looking at like what I was gonna do after, um, after law, because I was just like, you know, this just ain't me, like money aside, everything aside, like, I, I need to figure out something else to do before I kind of fully commit, right? So I looked at two things. And, and the funny thing about it is um, I looked at caskets and condoms. Mm. <laughs> wow, 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 but wow. like, but the, reason, but the reason why was I made a decision early on that I only wanted to work within the black community. Like okay. I was one of the first black people at the firm, like, you know, and you just deal with all of them issues, the micro microaggressions, you yeah. didn't kind of be the only person in the room. And then I was just like, you know, I don't necessarily want to bet my future on that pathway because all of us have had friends that kind of like, whose parents kind of went that whole route. And then you kind of get, you, you, you hit that ceiling. They don't let you fully right. progress to what your real potential was. Right. Um, and the reason I looked at caskets and condoms was with caskets, you know, we always own black funeral homes. There have always been some of the wealthiest people in our community. And you mm-hmm. could have a business where you, and I never knew of black owned condoms 
casket company. So I was like, you know, you could have a business where right. you just move through the churches and, and, and right. you'll be able to lock down the whole distribution channel right. without even right. having to go outside the community. Mm-hmm. Um, and the other thing was, was condoms. Cause I looked at that and I was like, you know, that's really the last element of nightlife that hasn't been disrupted. Right. right. So if you think about it, like you go to the club, we got music, we got the clubs, you know, we got liquor, we got clothing. Yeah. Right. Yeah. At the end of the day, people are having sex. And yeah. the only thing anybody knows about is Magnum. Right. But I'm like, yo, you look at Magnum's board all white. You look at their marketing team all white. Right. Like yeah. they, don't, they don't even really invest in the community like that to be able to have its stranglehold that it does. And I looked and I was like, yo, like I, I, I think either one of these two could be disrupted. Right. So, you know, like like most people, I didn't have a boatload of cash. I didn't know kind of where to start off or whatever. So I was like, yo. To me, condoms just made more sense. Mm. Um, and then at that point, you know, I went on my, like, Frank Lucas, right? Like, and this is legit. Right? <laughs> right? Like, yeah, I definitely want to get into that. Yeah, yeah. I was just going to ask you about the economics of everything. So, yeah, definitely get into yeah, that. Yeah, definitely. so, like, yeah, what yeah. happened at that point was, you know, I, I, I went to Google, and I'm like, yo, where are condoms made? Right? Like, like you know, yeah. I'm not, we're all learning. I think one of the biggest uh, misconceptions about like entrepreneurship or, or growing a business is that everybody always got all the answers, right? None of us right, got the right, answers. Right, we're all trying right, to right. learn, right? Very and true. we don't Very get true. equal access to venture capital funding. So we're usually yes. learning on our own time. We're learning yep. on our own dollar. Yeah. So one thing that I, that I was fortunate with, and I will always say this, right? When I practiced law, I made a boatload of cash, right? I made really, really good money for, you know, like as a corporate attorney or whatever, working at a big firm, but I, I was only paying like $700 rent. I still had a roommate, was living mad far below my means. I never scaled up of hot whip. I never bought, I was stacking all that bread, right? Well, I you know, I, that, that, that actually kind of hurt me just now, $700 rent. That, that, that kind of hurt me. It's like, <laughs> no, no, it's like wrong, double triple that right now. You know, yeah, yeah, right? yeah, like, yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but you know, like it was one of them things where like my mind was still in the grind, right? I was like, yo, yeah. I, can't, I can't get comfortable. Because, like, yo, the minute you get comfortable, you start living at your means, it's over. Yeah. Right? Right, 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 right. So I literally Googled. I was like, yo, where are condoms made? And I knew it was like, and it came down, like, Thailand, uh, Malaysia, and China. So I mm. bought a ticket, got my backpack, whoa, and whoa, went out. Whoa. Frank Lucas, for real. That's, that's yeah, dope. Yeah. That's dope. That's beautiful. Yeah. Man. And, and literally, like, I didn't know anything about that process, but I figured, like, yo, I, I had a list of 15, 16 different manufacturers. And mm. I was like, yo, I'm going to go by these people one by one, right? And I'm going to learn the game, right? Wow. So the first one I went to, then they kind of took me to like a rubber plantation, right? Now I see how that actually goes from like the rubber tree. I can walk mm. you through all of that to the manufacturing part of the game, whoa, whoa, right? Whoa. Then I went to manufacturing. Then he was telling me, okay, this is how it's tested, right? Like, so you have a, a air pressure test, which is like they fill it up with air, and you see at what tension does the condom break, right? Mm, then you have like a wow. water leak test where you fill it up with water, right? And you see at what level does, does, does the condom break? Then you have like an electronic pinhole test, right? Where you put it on there and it has like x-rays or whatever that goes through the condom and it lets you know for sure that it ain't got like no, um, that it has no like small holes or whatever that get, that get brought out through. And then, but also what was good about that is you're able to then identify the back end of a lot of these businesses, right? So you can see what numbers each each factory is hitting, right? Like who's just trying to meet their FDA versus like who's excelling in the area, right? Wow. But like to me- that's, that's great information as somebody, you know, who, who wants to become a potential distributor and all that. Like that's great yeah, information though right but, there. But it's, and, and for me, it was really important because I knew whatever I put into the community, I had to be able to like, like I was going on like, I had to be able to say for sure what what it really was, right? Like I'm not trying uh-huh. to give anybody no 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 half piece product or nothing yeah, like that. No, I'm not trying to cut, I'm not trying to like, you know, just get by or anything like that. So exactly, like me exactly. really knowing the back end, and I think it was also really good because what happens is, you know, when you really try to tell people about it, some people may think you're joking, other people may think like you're trying to like to convert chicks and get them into porn like everybody got their own idea when they hear sex they hear condoms and like for people to be able to shift their mindset to be like yo like this dude's really out here right and he and, he, and he's really trying to go up against like an 800 pound gorilla and he's yeah, serious yeah. about it right like yeah. and, 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 
and and real quick, I just want to applaud you on that itself because you said two very very remarkable things. And I'm big on you know I, I I'm big on our community and and what we do for ourselves. You know, becoming self sufficient mm-hmm. things like that. But the fact that you went out your way to uh, not only innovate yourself in the community but also protect the community and and you can look at it in all different ways in that aspect right there to make sure that you created your own you know, sort of gold standard for our own people to like directly yeah, yeah, yeah. in the community, right? Yeah. And then and not only that, but to make sure that, you know, like you said in the beginning, it's like, it's, 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 it is a taboo. It's a, it's a huge taboo, you know, yeah. across all cultures. But when you talk about our specific people to really come out here in these streets and let people know how serious you are with your brand. Mm-hmm. And because, you know, it, it's so true when you say that when you bring something like that up in a conversation with our own people, they do think you're joking or they think you're like, like, let me me, me tell you what's touch, right? right? Like, and and I'm a single dude, right? Like, yeah, no, you want, you want, you know, you, you hear so much just like funny for gazes type, like, like you'll tell a girl, she'd be like, how am I going to tell my parents what you do? I'm like, 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 I'm like, yo, you for real? Like, like, like like, imagine, right? Like you get ready to take a chick out on a date. Right. And like, y'all are, y'all are connecting she finds out what you do and then she's like ah like like everybody's so caught in this box right like we out of touch we out of touch <laughs> yeah yeah but for it's me, crazy what, what ended up happening is at some point you just and i'm sure that's the truth that that's the case in any business right you just got to shut it down right mm-hmm. like you can't that level of like peace of mind you can't allow it to be impacted because what happens is once it does you begin to question the whole process right like am i doing the right thing am i gonna succeed in this am i doing it the like i decided at some point because like then you say con you like condoms and people like no condos like you do real estate and you're like nah like like no this is what i do (laughs) yeah and and then it was really hard at the beginning stages because it wasn't all stable right like i left my gig without an income right like that was part of the reason that i saved up and a lot of this I had to learn as I went as I went through the process, right? And, like, and, what, was, and what year was that exactly when you were going through the process? So this was like, and, and yo, quick. yo. I started like the funny thing about it is I've been working below radar for like this nine years. Wow. Okay. Right. Like, but I, but I'll tell you, it, it hasn't been a straightforward pro. Like, the company's oh, yeah. been able to scale the last two to three, right? Mm-hmm. Like maybe like the last three years. Mm-hmm. Um, but that's because I shifted the government, right? So I'll, I'll, I'll give you, I'll give you, so when I brought in my condoms, number one, we, you know, none of us, I, like me and my partners or whatever, like we didn't really fully understand packaging. So like our first packaging, the condom was good, but the packaging was off, right? Mm-hmm. So mm-hmm. then like, like the design, people just didn't like the design. So then, and then I didn't know to kind of bring it in. I brought them in as 10 packs and, tw- and, and 12 packs or three packs. But in order to get them out, you got to have retail distribution. If you ain't got retail distribution, you just sitting on a lot of product. Sure, so then sure. what happened was the only people that were rocking with us were nonprofits, right? So then, but they buy in cases of a thousand. So then literally mm-hmm. what it became was me and my friends at my apartment, right? Breaking down 10 and 12 packs of condoms to put them in the cases <laughs> you're of moving, a thousand. You're moving them things. You're moving them things. Yo. But, but were, you, were you in Massachusetts at this time? or were you in New York? I was in New York, literally oh, in Harlem. Okay, okay, I, okay. I literally wow. had like me and like five, six friends over the crib, breaking down 10 packs, right? Putting them in a thousand case, getting on the subway, right? And then taking it literally on the Master P model, right? Man, like, so, so that's why so like- dope. So then, dope, so dope. It went from it went from man to like you know what then I and that was what I first set of samples and then I brought in a bigger order and then we got a um the cheapest warehousing that we could find at that time was on Brooks Ave in the Bronx right so then what it used to be was we brought all of our product into the into the Bronx into like a like storage facility or whatever but then you used to have to wait two hours for FedEx or for UPS to come because they'd be like yeah I'll be there at noon but they don't get there till three. So then it's literally just like you sitting there trying to coordinate, but like learn the game from ground up. And then we got a couple of smaller retail buys, got into Whole Foods and we did that because for us, it was important, even though our community don't really buy from Whole Foods, you know, we dealt with so much pushback about the seriousness of it, like the quality of it, right? That like we figured, okay, if you get it into Whole Foods, that 
that wipes out everybody's question. Forget money on that part. People go, oh, Whole Foods, it's in Whole Foods, it must be good. Right? right? right, right, right but right, then right. what happens is you get it in the Whole Foods and then you still got to turn. And that wasn't part of our market, right? So then at that point, then we we're like, yo, we got to shift because retail is only good if you already got that marketing budget right you already got the following you're already turning you can already get it off the shelf and trojan controls like 85 percent of the shelf mm -hmm. so for us we were like yo let's go government government you get three to five year contracts so you know like the new york city condo right they like they given they hate on us or whatever she they don't rock with us they don't they don't buy our stuff but like the south that's why i love my people right georgia alabama Mississippi, Tennessee, Louisiana, South Carolina. Our people, we're like the New York City condo. Right, right. Right? So then what happens that way is you get those contracts. Those are three to five year contracts. Now you've got a foundation, right? And, like, and, and, and real quick, I mean, that's, oh man. I mean, I, I really just want to jump over this guy right now because <laughs> I had two episodes already on just, I'm literally just talking about government contracts themselves. Oh, I, have two I cannot other... talk highly enough about them. There would be no company without the government. Right? So then what happened is I began to consolidate, like, and, it, and, it, and, the, and the good thing is, at least with the government, like, my, I'll, and, I'll, and I'll be real talk with you right now. We get zero money out of the Northeast. Zero. Outside of a couple of organizations, what we found was our experience, at least on the, at, no, the government side, yeah, it's zero. The organizational side, you know, but a lot, what, what I was, what I found a lot of, you'll get people that say, oh, I like what you're doing. I'll rub your back, but they ain't gonna cut you the check, mm -hmm. right? Like, it's that mm -hmm. kind of like, you, you deal with a different set of issues when it comes to race and when it comes to like, people being able to support, whereas in the South, mm -hmm. they're like, yo, we, we ought to have a plate, I see yeah. at this table, and I, and I, right. and right. you can, and you can have the same people in places of, in places of power in the South where they'll actually cut you that check so you can grow right, your business. Right, right, where right, in North, right. they're worrying about like shaking a system up or something yeah, like that, yeah. which is even That's part so of the reason true. now, like, you know, I went and bought us finally a big warehouse, a big office space. We're going to be headquartered out of Atlanta because my thought is like, yo, at home, we have it. Florida, there we have it. You, yeah, like, like you gotta, you gotta go to go, go to who pays you, consolidate that area, exactly, and then worry exactly. about the bigger markets or whatever. Like, right, right, and right. So, and, and, and the two, the two previous clients I had, we were talking about government contracts. One of them, uh, I did an interview, but I had a conversation with her. I seen her in another interview. A government con she, she was, she's in the trucking industry, and yeah. she was in Atlanta, and the other mm -hmm. one was in Atlanta. Let as me, well. let me, so let like, me tell you this. My first, and 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 to this day, to the day I die, like. I will, without the state of Georgia, I would say there'd be little to no black business. They were the first state to, to, to give me a contract. Wow. And wow. then, then because here goes how it went. I went to Morehouse, right? So they, I went, when they first heard about it, they were like, yo, we, we want to be able to support, right? Like that don't happen at a lot of white schools. Like they were like, yo, how can we help? They were like, yo, right, we don't right, buy right. our own condoms though. So I ain't, we ain't got no condom budget, but the state buys our condoms for us. Right, so they were like, "We'll reach out to the state and let them know when they buy condoms for us. Make sure there be condoms." Wow. Right, and then so that that then gave me a relationship with the state, and then mm -hmm. this from the state side, they were like, "Yo, we understand because this, at this point we're still kind of a semi startup, right?" Mm -hmm. They're like, "Yo, I can't. We're not gonna start off buying real big. We understand, like, but we, we, what we want to see is can you provide? Can you supply? Is your product gonna be good? And can you can you basically do what you say?" And then if you do, well, you'll grow with us, right? Like we'll support you down the road. So, and that's literally what happened. And then they actually started seeing when I say I'm shipping, I'm shipping. When I say I'm delivering, I'm delivering. When the condoms are good, they're good. And then at that point, they were like, once I was able to secure Georgia, then the lady in Georgia was like, yo, any other state, if they need a recommendation, have them call us. Like, Wow, wow, that's wow. the level of support a lot of times that we're missing in the community. Yes, yes, right? yes, yes. And you broke down so, that first domino, you know? I mean, it's because of you, honestly. That's how you did it, really. You know, yeah. you, you, you took it upon yourself to, you know, take that initiative. But like you said, you know, that support has to be there on the other end. But, oh, yeah. man, I because mean, look like, what you like, did. Like, 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 let me tell you, the city of New York, I've been battling with them people for 10 years. Yeah, they got yeah, the big yeah. um, MBE certified, a minority certified. I was based, companies based in New York City. I ain't made $1,000 off. I made a, I made a dollar off the city. Wow. They wow, give away wow, 50 wow. million. 50 million condoms a year, right? And you can't give me a dollar. 
<laughs> like, but that's the difference in that's the difference right, in mentalities. Right. Right. right? right, right like right, right, right. they ought to, they are like if so as much as people will say we support black, you know, we want to do right. everybody ain't the same. Right, but let me right, tell you that right. if 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 you're if you're a black business person, folk like the, the look look at the south first because at least then you'll like you'll be able to because it's all about who's going to open up that first door and i and then it's just a lot more tough it's a lot tougher it's a lot and that and that's just being honest man it's a lot it's a man. lot tougher up here and you know it's so funny because i'm, I'm you know I'm, I'm looking for financing for my first truck right now and uh you know like i said i was talking to uh mm -hmm. you know the the the, the lady yeah. in atlanta who got her government contract and i just started my little uh my sams uh dot gov you know so mm -hmm. i'm trying to go down the path of mm -hmm. government contract mm -hmm. but now you really put my whole perspective into like and, levels, and, all, like, and also right realize that they're state and federal right so like with right. me i got i'm on the state level so like on the state side i'm good right like yeah, i yeah. I'm, the, I'm a prime contractor with the state of illinois mm -hmm. i got like california i'm just bringing on board now mm -hmm. like others no. like but i got I'm getting zero federal dollars. Like I don't know the federal game yet, but I know federal is mm -hmm. a lot. Excuse me, it's a lot bigger. It's a lot bigger pool of money, so you mm -hmm. can make a lot more. And that's like yeah. you know where I where I plan to grow into next, right? Mm -hmm. As I go mm -hmm. and expand more products and all of this other stuff, then I can go at the bigger pool. But like if you're just talking about their survival and you and a smaller team and being able to grow that, right. state all state. day every day. Mm -hmm. Got you, got you. That's noted. That's noted right there. Yeah. This dude is giving out jazz, man. I mean, I love it. I love it. I love it. So, nah, but, but, I mean, but part of it yeah, is like, you know, it, for, for a lot of us, it's hard because we don't got the blueprint, right? Yeah. And, 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 I'll, and I'll be the first to tell you, right? Like, when I started the business, I had enough money for maybe two years, but then I went broke and the business still wasn't established, mm -hmm. right? So then it became a period where, like, you're, you're, you're kind of going back to it. Like I, I was doing like doc review, which for lawyers is kind of like temp legal, right? So mm -hmm. I'm doing that, trying to just pay my bills. Cause like everybody mm -hmm. else, we don't get access to outside funding yeah. getting turned down by a lot of banks, like getting like yep. all of these things right. were happening. So I'm doing that to keep a roof over my head while still trying to maneuver. How do I grow a company? Cause at this point I'm all in, right? Like I knew that there was no B plan. And then what happened was, when I, when I made that hard pivot to government, then I want a couple of contracts, but then now you got to figure out where do you get the money for it, right? But at least when you got a government contract, you can then qualify for SBA funding, Small Business Association. So then what I did, the all like, like, yeah, I raised capital like two years ago, right? But that capital was an SBA loan, right? Because what happened at that point is I had my government contracts in hand, right? And I'm like, in order to fulfill these government contracts, I need a government loan, right? So then you're able to maneuver around the process of like having to go pitch venture capitalists, having to right, go, right. you know, and everybody want to give you five, ten, and own and own half right, your company, right, dealing right, with people, right, people that just right, waste your right, time, right? right? Like you ain't time for time wasters, like. This so man is giving out the, too many gems. We, we got to take a pause right there. This <laughs> man is giving out too many <laughs> gems, man. I mean, that's that's literally right there. That's the number one problem: funding, funding, funding. And then they have to go. They feel like they feel like yeah. not have to, but they yeah. feel like they have to go these routes. They having all these percentages taken out of their business, mm -hmm. and then you know, oh yeah. my goodness, yeah. man! Yeah. Wow. And then wow. and then and then and then I will I will be really honest with you. Um, here was the second part of this that like to this day. And you'll, this will probably be one of the first interviews where I really talk about it. But when I went to the bank, right, I got shot down by about 15 banks, right? Good numbers, good contracts, yep, but right. wasn't given the opportunity. I knew it was race, right? So what I did at that point is I hired like an outside consultant, right, to come in to be my CFO, right, on a part-time basis, non-community person. Right, older white dude that just smart as a tack, really, really authentic, really loyal, um, but just genuinely a good person to be the face of the company. Not the whole company, but definitely on the finance side. We went to three banks, we got our full ask. One bank rejected us, right? One bank rejected us because he said the loan size wasn't big enough, right? One, lent, one, one, one offered a loan, but not at the full ask, and then the third offered a uh, a loan at full ask. 
and that's how and that that helped wow. that was also one factor and 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 did, do you want to do you want to uh kind of say how much that loan was for that first loan oh yeah no it, it was 200k so it's not okay, like okay. big but it's definitely enough to like where right, you can go right. like and i put all of that Start in the, the product engine. Right, like mm -hmm. I put, I put, like that's like, like you. I put all of that in the product because I knew I already had sales, right? So my challenge wasn't being able, like it wasn't. I didn't take that loan out on, um, on like the potential to get sales. I already had the sales in the pipeline. I needed that money just for the for to buy the product, right? So like even when it came to the loan, I'm like, yo, we're paying this directly to the manufacturer, right? We're paying this directly to the shipping because I'm moving containers. Right, and I'm like, yo, I'm not, I'm not getting it for a salary. I'm hustling the same way I'm hustling. I'm gonna be good. I could bankroll the next couple of stages because I already learned how to do it on a, on a, on a, on a smaller scale. But like, Man, but I'm this just, is, I'm just looking, at, I'm just looking at you like a bar of gold right now. Like, I'm, nah, like, nah, but uh, but but I mean, but, what, but what happens is, and this is what I what I like to tell a lot of people, like. Nobody has a blueprint for the path, right? But yeah, what, yeah, what yeah. we find is that our challenges, our experiences are going to be different from everybody else, yes. right? So what has to happen is how do we then maneuver around, right? Like my way to maneuver around was like, yo, I needed a foundation, right? Like, because unless you, when, you know, if, if your money ain't right, you know, you never good. Right, like yeah, yeah, so, yeah, like yeah, you yeah. can't always keep hustling. Like, yo, I, yeah. even if you get a big hit today, if your next hit don't come for like another six months or three months or four. Yeah, you you caught you caught all you're always tap dancing. Right, right. So right, for right, me, right. that's why government was a good way. Like now we're doing more retail. You know, I'm building out the team. You know, I got a big warehouse, but bills is paid through 2023. Right, like I love it. Corona I love hit, it. I we're love still it. gonna be it. a level of good, even though they're scaling yeah. back. I still got got confirmed orders that are gonna be coming in, so I can go and mm -hmm. test retail yep. on the right mm -hmm. way, realizing when I have to learn a little bit. I can go and test expanding my marketing, right? Realizing that we're gonna have to learn a little bit because I got a foundation. When we don't get access to capital, what it does is it wipes out that foundation. So not so taking, now you're taking it like, right out of my mouth. Right out of my mouth. Yeah. That's the number one problem. Funding. Yeah. That's it. Yeah. That's yeah. it. Yeah. Yeah. Because, like, like, I'll give you a perfect example. I went against two other companies that started at the same time as me. Right? One of them, you know, she, she raised four and a half million. Right out the gates. Right? You know, she wanted to do a condom targeting, like, women or whatever. White, white girl had a bet. You know, connected. I'll just put it like this. They were already connected. Raised four and yeah. a half million out the gates right my condom sales are beating hers right but like yo but like you give me four and a half million man i'd knock trojan off its off its hump right, quick. Right, right, right. but man. you realize that the like you know for us it's just a matter of trying to survive like they're not worrying yeah. about how am i gonna buy product right, right. like right, they, right, got, they got right. full teams doing things yes. that like you know that we're having to figure out how to do myself because right, you don't right, have the right. capital to spend it other ways Mm -hmm. um, and then the other company, they raised five million and went out of business, mm -hmm. right? That's why, like, people people say it's funny. I was talking to a guy the other day, and he's like, "Yo, Jay, you know, do you ever worry about you know now that you're doing your marketing and all of this other stuff, like somebody else is gonna come along and do it?" I'm like, "No." I'm like, "Well, like, I'm like, they're like, why?" I'm like, "Yo, do you know how much knowledge I got in this head right now? <laughs> like, yo, do you know how many pitfalls and how hard that challenge is? Yeah. Like, yeah, like yeah. this ain't no easy nut." Like, like it may look easy from outside coming in, but to be able to maneuver through that process, it it's bigger than money, and it, it and it, and it's bigger than experience. So that's why, like with me, the biggest things that I can share is if you're in a product, if you're in any business, right? Always realize it's going to be similar to that tech model, right? Like where you start is not going to be where you finish, mm -hmm. right? Because it's always about learning, adapting, and listening to customers. Right, like I'm on my fifth version of my packaging, right? So like my XL is our platinum extra large, right? So then it's like, why go with gold if you can go with platinum, right? And that's literally <laughs> like what we're gonna be aligning. Wow. I, I love it. I like that. I like that. <laughs> <laughs> that's dope. And then, and then you know, prior to Corona, like you know, we have some things in the cooker that really like I had this whole summer planned out. Like, yo, we were gonna yeah. be 
literally like in every state in the southeast mm. with being on radio in atlanta like having our mm. office and all of that street team that was gonna that was a whole summer plan you know now everything's changing up a little bit but you know like our our packaging our product like it took time to refine so even yeah. if you end up with a good product if you don't got the right presentation you may not have the right distribution yeah, you may not yeah. have it at the level in the right places all of this you're learning with time so like right, if you're exactly. patient if you're adapting and you're really listening and sometimes you may have to expand right, right like right, right, right. i'll tell you like the like the girl the one who i mentioned who came out and had four and a half million right she realized she was getting killed in condoms right like her 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 goal was to build like a condom company targeting women women weren't buying but mm. she shifted to um to like menstrual pads and cycle products and then went on a subscription mm. model business oh. now she's now she's making bank now she's right doing, like yeah. for her it was one of them types of things where like yeah you you may not start off where you finish she but, switched um, it up. Yeah. 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 but you got to switch it up and then the other part about like and kind of separate from the business area for me this was always key like just me being in this industry right because I care about health disparities, right? So like, if we're looking at what's happening with Corona, or if we look at what's happening with like, you know, just conversations around teenage pregnancy or like all of that type of stuff, like we need to have a seat at the table. Yeah. If, 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 if anything, if, if, if as a community, we know anything, it's that like, ain't no one coming to save us. Right. Like once things become a black issue, it's easy for everybody to turn the page. Right. And I think economically, politically, like in terms of our products, in terms of just how our community exists, that needs to always kind of be kept at the forefront. That unless we're going to help maneuver our own up, up this pipeline, and it may not be me to benefit. I, who knows? I may just be the roadrunner to open up the door for the next dude coming along after me, right? And I'll acknowledge that, right? Like before... You know, there was a Mike Tyson, there was a Muhammad Ali. Before there was a Muhammad Ali, there was a Jack Johnson, right? So, like, you know, before there was a before there was a Malcolm, there was a Martin. Bef no, before there was like a, a a Malcolm, there was a Marcus Garvey, right? Like, but, like right. we're all carrying the torch for yes. somebody else, right? And I may not be the guy to be able to take this to the finish line, but I'm realizing, like, and think about it, even in terms of NFL and coaching, <laughs> like, so many people come through, like. Like, like, if we're not opening that door to make sure that we're like, yo, we got to share whatever knowledge that we have, we can't hoard it, right? Like, one of my biggest issues, at least on the government side, was there was a, there was a gateway that was open when all of this minority contracting was first started, where you had a lot of Black businesses. That's when you had all of the Black mayors that got their push during that period, that late, that late 60s, early 70s, where mm -hmm. Black folks just came, and they ran all of them governments. Like, mm -hmm. even in Atlanta, like, you know, the, the, the Atlanta airport was built by H.J. Russell, right? Black, black construction company. Big wow. contracts. Wow. wow, I didn't even know like, that. People Should didn't I? know that. Like, what happened is that older generation that was, like, part of that first kind of, like, generation to really open it up, they create the foundation, but they never passed on that knowledge to the next mm. generation. So then all we did was really open it up for the Indians to come along, for the Chinese to come mm. along, and for everybody mm. else to be classified as a minority and to be able to carry on instead of us being able to benefit ourselves. Wow. So yeah. I think part of the reason, I know I'm so big with like, not only trying to make sure that, you know, as a company, B Condoms is working on like issues like human trafficking, issues like, like, like teenage pregnancy, issues of like HIV and AIDS, you know, and, yeah. and for all communities, like anybody that yeah. knows me knows like, yo, I'm a thousand percent comfortable in who I am. Like I'm a, I'm a regular dude. I like my women. I got my vices like everybody else, but like, it's not going to be a brand that's exclusive. So if this is impacting like gay people in the community, cool. Like if they're black then I care about it, right? If this is impacting women in the community, if they're black then I care about it, right? Like, you don't, it, it don't gotta be either or because we don't got enough, we don't got enough clout yet where we can be exclusive of anybody. Like, we really got to kind of, like, put all of our own issues behind ourselves and be like, yo, we have to move collectively because first and foremost, they're going to see you as your color first. They're not going to see a black Caribbean dude. They're not going to see a black African dude. Exactly. They're not going to see a black exactly. European guy. Like, man, like, gonna see man. <laughs> like, so I think- I preach that all the time, man. Yeah, so, like, part of our like, kind of, like, deconstruct to reconstruct 
is like like we just gotta like realize what our strength is and begin to monopolize on that area realizing that like we could we could do everything that everybody else does ain't nothing special about these guys like we got our same flavor like don't get me wrong i will say that there's some cultures like that asian culture like yo these dudes they can be like really like they can be regimented in a way that not a lot of people around the world can be yeah like but the same way we can be a lot more creative than a lot of other people around the world could be like you know I, like when I always look at look at like different cultures or different races, kind of like like the X Men, right? Everybody has their secret sauce, right? Okay, like, yeah, yeah, like yeah. Your sauce may be different from mine, right? And mm-hmm. I and I and I think that's also true of people, right? Mm-hmm. Like we all have what we're genuinely good at, right? And then the more we find out what that is, the more strength that we can leverage and the more that we can control it, right? I know that there are things that I know that I'm already at the 99th percentile. Me and like op- operations, I see it in my sleep, right? Like nobody ever taught it to me. I, I, I fine tune that gift, but like, that's what my, that's what like my gift is. Me and marketing, anybody will tell you I'm the worst mark. Like I got people that do that. Like I can identify good marketing from bad, right. but right. you're going to ask me to send tweets. You're going to ask me to like brand, like that just ain't me. Like, it's not my skill set. Finances, I can maybe work myself up to like an 85, 90, but I ain't ever going to be at that 99. Like, they're just going to be, because, but what it is, is find out like what your, what your, what your power is. And right? that's, that's a skill set by itself. Just having a team and knowing your, your, the differences between, you know, what you're good at and what you want to, uh, yeah. you know, outsource. Yeah. Simple as that. That's a skill set yeah. right there. Yeah, 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 yeah. So, and, 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 and I think, you know, for any business person, once you're able to know that, then you can, you like, of course, if you're starting off and you're one of us, you're going to have to learn everything at the very beginning, right? Like there's no, there's no shortcuts around it, yeah, yeah. but you, you can begin to identify areas where it makes sense to bring people on because you realize it takes a lot more of your time than something else may. Um, mm-hmm. So that, that would be another kind of like, realize what your secret sauce is, like what's your power. And then once you know your power, don't like don't ever question that area fine tune it maximize it and make sure that that's one area of your company that like always will be at 99 percent. because if you can lift the other areas then your company will always do a lot better very true very true i mean that's what i have to, I have to, have to blow the screen because i mean i mean this 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 is this is, you know, so much of what you said is, is so much of what we need to hear as a people, you know, everything from entrepreneurship to literally having a mindset to do whatever you want to do in whatever industry. Um, and, you know, honestly, at this point, well, you know, you, you talked about so much, but at this point, um, you know, in 2020 with the corona and everything going on, where do you want to take the direction of the company, you know, even after corona is finished and, you know, where do you see yourself on that? I mean, or even if you do see yourself on that, that, that huge retail scale of like a children or something like that. Um, for me, that's where I want to be. Um, I think one of the things that, that, that happens a lot, like we don't need to dream small, Mm -hmm. right? Like if anything, I think we've almost been conditioned to always expect to expect Mm -hmm. a piece of the Mm -hmm. table instead of the whole table. Mm -hmm. Right? Like, and, 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 and we, we always won't have the same pathway, right? Like if there's one similarity with this kind of like newer wave of like people that have come from our community that have been able to make it big, like you'll, you'll, you'll get a few exceptions, but part of it is it's ownership, right? It's ownership. It's in its building and, it, and it's building a business or building a product right like unless you're looking at like a jay-z beyonce model where you got kind of two you got like kind of two high earning families that kind of combine to make a big one right like kanye got the yeezys right like you look at like bob smith right like he had his venture capital company which which invested in software and tech right like you look at bob johnson he had bet you look at oprah she had like her tv show but there was always an element of ownership within all of that and when i look at the condom industry like off the cuff blacks spend 300 million dollars a year in condoms Mm. so even if i don't make a dollar outside of any community i need to own 90 percent of that right like 
And then can it can and then can once I'm big enough, can I go like on the Ciroc model, right? Where I move it from something where I start off in the black community to something more mainstream? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Then can it go global? Yeah. But initially, my goal is to put a fortress around the black community and be like, yo, I'm here for you. You can be here for me and let's cons let let's really let's really let let's get let's get our piece of the pie. Right. Yeah. And why that's yeah. important is more than one. Right. Like I, as a small company, literally employ more black folks than the bigger guys. How is that mm. possible? Right. Like I know billion dollar conglomerate. Right? right. But if we're not hiring from our community, ain't no one hiring. Like right. these are right. real issues. Yeah. Like yeah. And, when, when, and how many employees do you have at the moment? No, no. We're, we're small. We got five. OK. Right? okay. Like. Gotcha, five gotcha. like like stable right and then we mm -hmm, got like mm -hmm. contractors and other people that yeah. kind of come on or whatever but like yeah, yeah. but why is that right like you know like you you read an article on facebook they bring in a thousand employees and they bring in like four four people of four african-american or four yeah, four black yeah, folks yeah. right yeah. like if we're not doing it then it ain't getting done right. if there's a lesson like at some point numbers don't lie like, you know what they say, men lie, women lie, numbers don't. That's right. Like, right. focus on the data. And what happens is when you challenge people's mindset just based on a purely data, like, I don't want to hear, oh, so-and-so is a nice company, so-and-so cares about the community, show me what the numbers say. I'll show you what, the, what they care about. <laughs> right? Like, yeah, you want to yeah. see what somebody's interested in, show me where they're going to put their money. Right, right, right. right, right. So, like, That's when so I true. look at it, for me, what my goal is, I got my headquarters, I got my big office space, I'm setting all of that up right now. If it wasn't for Corona, I'd be, I'd be talking to you out of there, you got the invite, all of that stuff. Like, but literally yeah. once Corona ends, all of that's set up, mm -hmm. we take over the Southeast, hands down, 60, 60 day strategy. We're like, like, yo, wow. woom, right? Yeah, yeah, it's, it's yeah. Six yeah. months strategy. Over. Not take over. This is a takeover over. chapter right here. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And and then I think at that level, we would be able to at least get enough um, awareness of our brand inside the Black community that I can begin to transition it into retail. And then after we go into the retail part, then you go, then you look at other Black markets. So then you look kind of coming in that way into, into a Brooklyn or into an Oakland or into an East St. Louis and into like a Chicago, you know, into all of these areas where we got our pockets of people. But our products, man. But our product isn't current, currently carried. And then from there, then you just push over the big dog, man. Because because what happens is when you're a smaller brand, everybody may not align with you. People, everybody clout chasing, right? So they're, they're looking at you. They're like, oh yeah, you know, I kind of like what you're doing, but I'm yep. gonna deal with you from afar. Right. Or exactly. like that, like, and people are still be able to ask that craziness, like, oh yeah, you know, I'm gonna help, but like, what you gonna give me on this? And I'm like, dude, like you ain't been around these. <laughs> like, if you knew what I did this nine years to get it to this level. Like right. you wouldn't even ask that question. Right, right. Like, right, right. but I think that's my goal. Um, and then once I leverage the brand, I think that I will have a tool at which I can do a lot of good in the black community. Right? Mm -hmm. Like, because in a lot of ways it does interconnect with everything, right? right? Like if we're talking about sex, if we're talking about health, if we're talking about mm -hmm. media, if we're talking about mm -hmm. nightlife, mm -hmm. if we're talking about entertainment, right? right. My right. goal has always made always make the brand to be a true reflection of the community so that way whether you're that 80 year old like kind of like grandparent who's like trying to talk to their parents about you know people are going to have sex it's okay like or if you're like that 17 year old kid you can look at something and be like i can rock with that right, right? Right, right but then it still gives me the flexibility to make sure that the brand is present everywhere we need to be so yeah. who's setting policies related to our community right like who's kind of controlling the media related to our community like we can have an avenue at which a lot of the ta a lot of discussions that need to happen can happen through our vessel, through our vehicle. I mean, I mean, this guy right here. I mean, I'm literally just I'm literally seeing you as the next, the next big thing. I mean, you, you know, I don't I don't know if you if you kind of could see it. I mean, I think you could see it yourself, man. But the the innovation that I see in you in just this conversation. And first of all, you know, of course, I appreciate you coming on the platform and, no, 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 and, and sharing your vision. And, you know, it's such an innovative conversation, but I really feel like this is just the beginning. Like, like you keep saying, you keep hinting at it. 
And I think, you know, I, I don't even know if it'll be 12 months from now when you'll literally be on that stage um, because you have everything set up. And like you said, it took time. It, it, it took the blood, sweat and tears, but you always had that vision and the structure put together. And I mean, I, I really think the sky's the limit for you, man. I mean, I I really appreciate this conversation there with you. No, no, no. I like I I appreciate you and this opportunity. Like, and you and 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 I think the biggest thing, like at least from my side, which you know, it hasn't been easy, right? Yeah. Like, uh, yeah. like you know, I I paid all my dues. Like, am I am yeah, I rich yeah. right now? No. Am I am I still grinding right now? Yes. Do I got all, all yeah. the answers right now? No. But. I've got a lot more answers today than I had yesterday, than I had two years ago, than I had four years ago, right? And then in each, in, at each level, you know, what, the biggest thing I can tell anybody, it's about fine tune your process, yeah. right? Like, as long as you're getting better, like what, what do people say? Luck is when like opportunity meets preparation. Yeah, yeah, right, yeah. like Kevin Durant. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> right, right. Like, what happens eventually, right, is like, you know, my, my dad, I, I got I to gotta give him credit real quick before, you know, we end this or whatever. But one of the things yeah, he yeah. always said is he was like, yo, Jay, he's like, he's like, you knock at the door, right? If they don't open, he's like, you bang on that door. He's like, if they don't open, he's like, you start kicking that door. If they don't open, like, then you start running into that door. You start ramming that door. But if you, if you knock on a door long enough, it will open, mm -hmm. right? And, and his biggest thing, to, and, and what he really meant by that was you got to be consistent and you got to persevere, right? Yeah. Like, t like, don't take, take it as, take it as, 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 as born. You're going to get knocked on your ass. You're going to, you're going to have challenges. It's going to, going to be some really, really dark days, right? Yeah. But as long as you're moving further away from what you don't want to be and closer to where you do want to be, you're eventually those paths are going to align, right? Like you're, 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 you're going to, that door is going to open, right? Like for me, I'm finally at a point right now where I, you know, it's kind of like a chessboard. It's almost like any job where you, where you get to that point at which you look up and you're like, you know that you know, right? Like, like you've gone through this so many times that like, you know what you know and you can't, and, and, and you cannot, and you don't even allow others to question it because you already right, know right. in your head. Like you're at, you're at, like, you're at that level because you've been there, you've done that, you've taken your exactly. hits, you've taken your lumps, right? And that's what I sense. That's what and, I told you. I sense that you're at that level right now. You know, I, I can feel and, it. Yeah, yeah. Like, like, I, I, like, I trust myself. I trust it, you know, like, I'm, I'm gonna, I, I may not get everything right. I may not always say everything perfect, but like, I know where I'm doing it from. I know why I'm doing it. I'm trusting in the process. And I know that it's going to work out. Like, I just know that I know. <laughs> and I can't That's tell it. you why, but like, everything's coming together now, which yeah. kind of makes those early days. Like, mm -hmm. I'm right. like, you know, you All look back and then you look ahead and like, I have a lot more confidence now because I realize the challenges I experienced now were nothing relative yeah. to what I went through already. So yeah. I'm like, yeah, if I could have made it through this, it is right here, man. Like, yeah, yeah this is yeah. right. Like, cheesecake, cheesecake. Yeah, yeah. But that's also part of the thing with like I think as black entrepreneurs, you know, when when people say like you can't give up, or when people say like you know you got to kind of be battle tested, that's because like we aren't gonna have all of the opportunity earlier on, right? Like anybody can tell you when I first won those contracts, and I didn't have that capital. To me, that was the most stressful point in my life, right? Because I was like five six years in right and if i didn't get the capital there would be no company like you can't go back after winning these contracts and be like i know i didn't have that money the first time around but hopefully in three years i'll have it so it was one of the scenarios where if you didn't raise the comp raise the money there was going to be no company right, right? right. so right. for me that to me was the most stressful I think six or seven month period that I had in the whole business, mm -hmm. right? Because when you get knocked down from 15 banks, black banks and white banks, mm -hmm. right? Like mm -hmm. Kava Bank, like you name them, they, they, they weren't trying to rock. And then you look up and then you start getting like, you go through depression. Like, oh, yeah. we're, all, we're all human, 
right? Like, yep. and then you're like, like, what am I supposed to do? And you know the reasons why, like, you know, you're black, like, like you know that yeah. you got good numbers, you know that you got yeah. good contracts and you know that you got, well, if you were anybody else, it would be okay. And then, you know, you get the answer that you got, you got to keep trying, keep maneuvering, keep trying to figure a way, like, how do you, how do you maneuver around? How do you take, take down that, take down that beast? Right. And that, and then, you know, but then, but when you pass that, then it's like, all right, now you pass here. Now let me figure out how to grow it. Like, but yeah, mm. growing it's a, it's a lot easier in my mind. You know, like, you know, you get a lot, little bit more flexibility on that side than you do on, on the flip side, which is like, how do you just get into the game? Like now exactly. I'm in the game. Now I'm looking around. I'm like, all right, I, I can play this game. <laughs> like, Cause I got, I got, I got, I, got, I, I can breathe. I got a foundation. I got, a, exactly. I got, I got people I trust. I got people I like. All right. It's just but getting yeah. into the game. So true. So true. Oh man. I mean, whoo, man. I mean, I mean, at this point, I mean, I would say, do you have any last words? But you gave us so many gems. I, you know, I really appreciate. It. <laughs> uh, but real quick, how, how how old are you, by the way? So I just turned forty. Really? Yeah. Damn. yeah. Yeah, I yeah, thought you yeah. was my age. I'm only 26. Damn, yeah, I thought yeah, you were my yeah, age. That's yeah, crazy. Yeah, 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 they don't yeah, crack. They don't crack. <laughs> Damn. Wow, wow. Yeah. That's crazy. Yeah, yeah, Damn. yeah, yeah, yeah. So now nah, I'll, I'll tell you. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm older. Like, and yeah. I think that, like, like it's funny because like sometimes like people are seeing they'll be like, yo, like they, they can't, they'll think I'm younger or whatever just because I got like a like like you know, guess my family or whatever. People don't people age a little bit more slow, but yeah. like. But I, but I, but the other part about it, it's good because, you know, people are like, I think if I came through and I'm like real old looking or whatever, I got the full white beard or something like that. Look, like some people just don't age as well. Um, yeah, yeah. Then it would, I think on that side, it would be better from like credibility side with some of the clients. Right. Yeah. But like, right. but from a branding side, it may be a little bit more difficult because they're like, yo, who this old ass dude? Right. Like, right, 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 whereas right. like with me, it's like, it's, it's, it's a little bit different. Like I'll, which is also good because like, I'm like, yo, I would rather, um, I would rather age a little bit more slowly than age quicker. Cause I'm trying right, like, right, my ideal goal is, you know, you build your company, you set it all up. Hopefully eventually, you know, you sell it or you, you let somebody else run it and then you sit back and you chill. Like ain't no one right. trying to work to the day they die, man. Like don't, exactly. I don't like, my goal is to give back, to do good. And then to, and then to be a, to be a cool ass dad and lip, lip, right. be that old dude on a rocking chair, right? right like right, right. share yeah, my yeah, knowledge. Yeah. Like after, after right. like my goal is to build this up, sell it off and then teach entrepreneurship. Mm -hmm. Like, because yeah. real talk, I got so much knowledge in my head that I've been able to gain, mm -hmm. right? That I, that I'm like, yo, I don't, if somebody would have told me to, if somebody would have given me this knowledge, like I would have been so much further ahead so much earlier on. Right, right, Whereas right, like right. I don't have so I'm like, yo, my next goal, I already know, like my like after this is done, I'm not looking for next next new hits. Like if you if I only get one hit and this is it, I'm gonna ride it out until I know I'm gonna be good off this, right? right and then at right. that point, then I'm like, yo, let me go back, let me teach process. I'm not even trying to take people's companies. Like, yo, yeah. let me just share my knowledge because or or if I do like like invest in like other companies, I'll make that like a pool of investment for future mm. companies, right? Like where yo, I'll give you all of my knowledge, I'll do upfront money, but if your company ends up being successful, so and so has to go into this pool and that pool is then gonna be used for future investments on other companies. Like Man, it's like it's like a knowledge good? fund. <laughs> yeah, a knowledge fund because we need that. Yeah, no, definitely. Of course. Yeah. No, no, no. Yeah, that's that's yeah, definitely yeah. Like, necessity. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah yeah i mean and, and that's that's one of the reasons why i do you know these interviews because you know um the main reason is to you know like i said in the beginning to you know interview people from all walks of life any business any industry but at the same time i'm learning as well you know i'm an entrepreneur myself like i said yeah. i'm trying to you know get a truck and you know do all these different type of things yeah. but at the same time I'm, I'm i'm soaking everything in in myself you know so and that's what we need like you just said you know that and trust that trucking you know, industry is a good I, like oh. one of my boys sent me an interview the other day like yo it's such a cash business too oh, man. like in oh, terms of like man. like they do and, and that's why that's why like, i kind of want to stay on with you you know after after we finish interview because i need some of that <laughs> that, that stay funded yeah, you know but like, but yeah. And, and 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 there's two parts of that there's domestic and then there's also the international on the shipping side but like oh those are good those are good businesses yeah, bro definitely
Definitely, definitely, definitely. Yeah, it's, 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 it's kind of a challenge right now with me. You know, like you said, in any industry, you know, just getting into the game, that first threshold. But I got to keep mm-hmm. fighting, man. You know, it's, it's in us. We can't, you know, I, I came too yeah. far all over, you know, so, I, you know, that's how it is. And, 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 and the second thing that I would always say is kind of be patient with the process, right? Because I think a lot of times, like, people expect it to be like three months, then you're done. Six months, then you're done. That's when you true. don't that's have true. like the infrastructure, which is like a lot of times the access to capital, it's just not yeah. going to happen as quickly, right? That's like, true. so my biggest thing is like, yo, just take your time and understand, like, yo, if if it's a if it's a hundred point game, right? If we're starting off at point ten, you know, as long as you're getting to eleven, as long as you're getting to twelve, as long right. as you're getting to thirteen, the fourteen, yeah. the fifteen. Yeah. Eventually, you may get from 40 to 60 in two days, right? But, right, like, right, right. those beginning yeah. stages are all going to come at their own time based upon, mm-hmm. like, how, how, how much other support you have on the outside. Right, 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 right. No, definitely, definitely. I mean, yeah, you took it back to the tortoise in the hair days. There. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Man, I, I really appreciate it. This nah, is such because, a like, conversation. Like, no, like, I, I, I'll joke, and, and, and I know you trying to wrap it up. Like, I'm trying but no, like, no, I'm, I'm, I'm so I'm, I'm big jokes or whatever. Like I'm like, yo, I compare to, compare myself to like the engine that could, right? Like, <laughs> like, Dang, like you know, like you're that, taking a bite. What you know about that? Yeah, you should be asking me what I know about boat, that. Yeah, yeah like, that's my cause, joke. Because like real talk, a lot of our businesses, and and that's one of my big issue about like you know with this government bailouts and all of this. Yeah. I, I was watching TV the other day, and they were like, yo. Only like, like they, they said out of a hundred black businesses, only four of them got money. That's what I've seen the same thing. percent of black businesses. So like if it, we're always really on that shorter end when it comes right. to access. And that just means that also like you're going to have a lot more black businesses dying. Right, right, then you're gonna right, have right. like we didn't even, even have a big foundation to start off. That's what I just said. Right, like even we were even already before stretched we in before. Yeah. It's crazy. It's just, oh man. I mean, yeah, yeah. And that's why that knowledge comes in. You know, if you knew about government funding before, if you knew about the state and, you know, just different, different little levels of yeah, yeah. to we, we could we could have access to, but that's just, you know, that's just what we got to deal with. You know, we got to keep yeah. going. We got to keep going. You know, we got to, you know, stay innovative and, and, and do everything that you said, you know, literally. You know, and it will be yeah. good. We'll be good. We we're gonna be good. We're gonna be good. Yeah. I mean, look at you. You know, I mean, like you said in the beginning, you said this literally in the beginning. You're a regular guy. You have your vices. Yeah. Better, but look, look at all the steps you took to get to where you yeah. are. Anybody yeah. Can yeah. Can anybody yeah. can do this. Anybody can do this. Anybody like 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 when I like and 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 that's one of my biggest things. I'm like, yo, like, am I am I am I smart? Like, yeah, I consider myself as smart as the next man, but I'm not like no, I'm not like no rocket scientist or nothing no. like that. But like one no. thing that I got is like, I'm like, yo. I'm going to persevere where a lot of other people may kind of crumble. I'm like, yo, I refuse. Or if a lot of people allow that conference to be shaken, I'll find a way to put a cocoon inside my body, inside my mind to be like, yo, I just, you can't let people peer so deeply into your soul because you're you're automatically going to be dealing with your own, your own stuff. Right. Like, so so you can't allow people to pile on to the point because at the end of the day, you're, you're the only one responsible for yourself. Now, don't get me wrong. Like, I look up now and I'm like, yo, I pushed off a lot of different parts of life for this, right? Like, Mm -hmm. yo, look now. Like, I'm not married yet. I ain't got no kids yet. Like, I couldn't do that until I got stable in my mind, right? Because, like, you know, a lot of times, like, people are like, yo, like, I I was dating one chick when I first started. She was like, yeah, I know you don't like Lauren and all of that. But, like, you know, you have your degree. Like, why, 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 you know, you went through the schooling, like, and, for somebody that just wants stability, for somebody that just wants a check and a life, like that makes sense. But for somebody that hates their job, it wasn't ever going to work. And then what happens is like, there a true. lot of times when you're in a relationship, it's, it's, two, it's two different sides, right? And they're planning your, their life off of not only theirs, but yours, right? So Woo! like with me, regardless, I knew that that was going to be the next level of stress to come, right? So I'm like, yo, I can't, I can't add that on to my old stuff that I'm going through right now, that's right? So like that's a that's a true entrepreneur right there, like honestly, like, right? Because because that's... It, it, that's real, but it's hard because now I'm like yeah. I'm finally like all right, now I'm stable now, like yeah. and now's the first time that I'm like, yo, 
I can now look to kind of build that other part. Not to say I'm rich, and, but I'm like, I'm good, right? Like, I now, I ain't got to worry about keeping no lights on, right? I ain't got to worry yeah, about right, being able right. to, like, like, oh, like <laughs> but this yeah, wasn't overnight, yeah. right? And people don't yeah, realize, yeah. like, what happens is, do, do I think that, that it, even if I had a good chick, and I didn't have some real down-ass chicks, right? Do I think somebody would have been able to be, like, with me all through them five years when I ain't got no money? When I, yeah. when, when literally the business is looking like it should be failing, literally when like part of my business partners and all of us are having a split because the business can't support us, right? Like people ain't about that part of their life. Like every, it's one thing to say it, it's another thing to live it, right? That's like, right, that's right. And, and me, tell those women right now that's listening, tell them again, you know, <laughs> tell them again. <laughs> So like, yeah. but you know, and, and 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 this is just like real, man. Like, yeah, it's too real. you know, too real. like, but you know, but I look up now and I'm like, yo, I wouldn't have had it any other way, right? right? Like, I always right. decided I was like, yo, I would rather take ten years of being miserable than forty years, ten years of being miserable and unhappy for the rest of my life than forty years of being semi miserable my whole life, right? Yeah. Like, there yeah. you have it. And hopefully that's not my situation, man. Because uh, you know I, I got a couple things going on. <laughs> nah, you gonna be locked me. in way, way before me. Yeah. <laughs> we'll see. We'll see. Shout out to my lady watching this, but anyway, <laughs> anyway, man. <laughs> so man, I mean, this is such a dope conversation, man. I feel like we could talk for hours, man. And I'm gonna definitely yeah. have you back on here. I'm definitely have yeah, you back. Nah, on nah. Here. Any anytime. Um, just let yeah. Just let me know. Definitely. And, and, and let the people know all your social media platforms. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so if you want to find us, um, definitely. Um, hold on, hold on. My bad. Yeah. Uh, you can definitely find us. So it's at B condoms. So the letter B condoms with an S. Uh, you can go to B condoms dot com. Find us on on Instagram. Uh, if anybody has any questions for me, it's Jason K. Panda. Um, you can find me on Instagram or whatever as well. Um, and definitely if oh and if you're gonna buy you can use the code be safe and you'll get 20 percent off your uh 20 percent off your purchase i uh, appreciate excellent. that thanks a lot man wow I, I really appreciate the conversation man and um i hope y'all understand jason panda is i hope y'all you know get familiar with the name i remember when uh when mike jordan um i think it was like 84 his rookie year and then he was doing his thing in, in the league as a rookie and then one of the uh one of the um announcers was like uh, folks, if you if you're listening to this right now, make sure you keep the name Michael Jordan in your head, and look what happened. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> <laughs> so I just want to make sure. I just want to make sure. So man, I appreciate. It. I appreciate it. Nah, it's your I man. Everything by man. Job, man. Nah, appreciate that. All right. All right. Peace. All right. All right peace. Take it light.